Um, I just wanted to start by saying that uh, the overview that you've just heard from Kate is exactly what is happening in, the, in Ghana where I work. I work in the three regions of northern Ghana. Um, I just want to go straight uh, to give you the impact. Show, um, sorry. Um, as you can see, in northern Ghana, we suffer a lot of cultural practice. Most of our, our, our issues are surrounded uh, by the cultural practices and the mindsets of the people as to who a woman actually is. We are regarded as part of family property because of the um, high bride price that is being paid. And it can be seen in the widowhood rights, uh, can be seen in the um, wife or spousal inheritance. So if your husband dies, you have to marry another person from the family. You have a choice though, but um, the intention is to keep the dowry that you have paid to your family from within the family. And so there's a need for the brother of the disease to still keep you and you continue to have children so that the line of your former husband will still continue within uh, that particular family. And so issues such as these make us uh, part of the family property. And so the issues of inheritance, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a no-go area for the woman because one, you are seen as property. And so if you are property, how do you inherit property? Because then if the other person who is going to inherit your husband will inherit including you. And so you are part of the property. You are, however, uh, you however have a chance to make use of things that you have been able to acquire yourself during the course of the marriage, like keeping small root, root, uh, uh, like goats or sheep or chicken. Those are yours, and those are your property. In fact, if uh, you are a girl, a girl child, uh, in your father's house, you cannot inherit because you are seen as somebody's wife, and so you'll be moving into another family. And so you, can, you, you might only be able to inherit the things that your mother has. And we all know the things that the women have. They don't have anything that is valuable. You have no land. You have no cattle. And these are the most valuable things in the, in the family. So your mother is less left with the cooking utensils, her clothes, and the few beads that she has got. And those are the things that you are likely to inherit. And the son inherits all the things that are of value to the family. And so the, this, this uh, the poverty will always go from the mother to the daughter to the granddaughter. It goes on and on. So generationally, you continue to be poor, and that is our situation. However, we have not um, folded our arms and said, what do we do about this? My organization has been working with women in the communities, and we are trying to change people's mindsets um, over a period of time. I just want to go to the strategies. So just let's uh, have a few minutes, so just go to the strategies. We always try to identify what our issues are at the community level, and we engage ourselves in mapping the issues and finding solutions, customary solutions, things that we know will work with us. In fact, we have beautiful laws in my country. We have the interstate succession law, which protects people, but the issue of literacy, high rates of illiteracy, people don't even understand what it is, people will not even go for it. It is time consuming. You waste all your time in the courts going through all these things, so women just allow it to pass. I mean, she's safe with her children and she's okay because she might use all her resources in trying to get redress and that could take a whole lot of her time. And so um, we always go through the customary practices. What are the issues, what are the mechanisms that is in the custom that protects the women. And so we map the issues and then we identify these kind of uh, mechanisms and we use them. Because some of them are actually intended to protect the women, but over time, people have, the, the gains of those kind of mechanisms have eroded and they are now having negative impacts. And so we map these issues and we, together with the communities, identify the solutions that we can arrive at that. Now we go back into the communities and we validate these issues with um, our customary leaders, our chiefs, 
our uh, uh, clan heads, and uh, we, we come or arrive at very um, positive conclusions for the women. At least if they cannot even inherit uh, your land, but then they can continue to have use of the land. Grad it's a gradual process, because these are mindsets that have been established over years, and you just don't take a few years to erode these things. So we do it gradually, and we are making progress. Uh, we also um, do a lot of education and sensitization. Our laws are in English. The local language is very, very minimal. People don't even, can't even read uh, effectively in their local language. So even if you put the laws in the local language, just a few people will be able to read. So we do a lot of sensitization and awareness creation. We hold a lot of consultations with our community leaders. And uh, we are in this current uh, position using uh, women chiefs. We have got women chiefs who we call as uh, in the local language, or queen mothers. That is understandable in our context here. And so we use them. Uh, we liaise with them, and they also liaise with the chiefs because they are the direct link with the chiefs and they are always revered. So when we have issues, we contact these uh, queen mothers and we put our issues before them, and they are the link between us and the chiefs in the community. Um, we also have local to local dialogues in which at the community level, uh, it will depend on the activities that are ongoing during the farming season, our women are on the farm. But during the harvest, after the harvest and all that, we could have a monthly forum uh, with our chiefs. And then we put our issues before them. And that is how uh, we get the spaces that we are able to create for ourselves within the chief's compound uh, to be able to put our issues before them. And um, most of the times, they do listen. And we are making inroads. We also use the media a lot, because that is the only way we can generate a lot of discussion from within the communities. And then the general public will support us in the issues that we are doing. Again, we have capacity building. The issue of um, inheritance goes hand in hand, most often with abuse. Physical, mental, anyhow. Because uh, these are issues that affect these women. And some of them, like Kate said, they have to take a decision. Should I stay and continue to have usage of whatever property my husband has left behind, or should I move? And most of the times when the women are assertive and they want to take what is theirs, there's a lot of domestic violence. Because there are many people have got interest in what you are trying to claim. And so we train community paralegals, we train community watchdogs to identify early warning signs of domestic abuse. And these women are always the uh, are always at the forefront, and they then um, inform us about what is happening at the community. And then we can then also con uh, refer them to other organizations that will uh, give them the legal service. We don't do legal service, but then we refer them to legal organizations that will help these women. And then uh, we do a lot of training on land rights, because the issue of land is a no-go area for women. We are excluded in his discussions. We are excluded in the decisions concerning land. If a man has a piece of land, he's selling it without you because you are not part. He did not consult you when he was buying it. And so when he's selling it, he's not consulting you either. We also have, we do a lot of peer exchanges because, uh, as I said earlier on, because of the levels of illiteracy, and most of these women have not had the opportunity to go out elsewhere to see what is happening in other localities. They think that they are the unfortunate ones on, on the face of the earth, and that there is nothing that they can do. And so we link them up with other organizations, with other groups that have had opportunity to have redress, and they go and they share these experiences with them. And the picture that you can see there is a group of women who have been accused of witchcraft. And now the, the very easy thing that can disinherit you in Ghana or in the area where I come from is the accusation of witchcraft. Instantly, you are banished from the community. And that means that whatever your husband has within the community is lost to you. And so this group of women that you can see are on a peer exchange with another group of women who have been accused of witchcraft. They have been beneficiaries of some of our support that we have given to them. So we just send them out to be able to talk to their 
colleague women and tell them if you have this kind of situation, this is where you can go. So they are a kind of um, stopgap for us. When they go in and they do this uh, exchange, they learn, they also uh, share experiences with other women. Then the women are able to take the decisions that they are supposed to take because then they know that they are not alone and that they can have people who will be able to support them. Uh, we build networks. You have seen that, that picture there. Uh, we're talking about women access to land and land is increasingly becoming expensive for women. And so you are talking about them getting access to inherit as well as buy off land that they can use for their own economic uh, purposes. And so most of the time these women, uh, we link them up to financial institutions and those women uh, are just uh, in the process of getting uh, some kind of support. Our impact has been very enormous. I would say that we have increased knowledge around land and property rights. We have also increased ownership through titling. The women do some work and they are able to get money to be able to buy off a piece of land if they can. And uh, through our consultations with our chiefs, our women have been able to get, uh, some women groups have been given um, about 120 acres of land that they can use for their farming purposes, thereby increasing their livelihood and improving their standard of living. Um, we also have had strategic partnerships with our traditional leaders. It's one of the greatest impact that we have had. For a long time, the chiefs are in a kind of situation where we cannot access them and be able to talk to them about the customary issues that are affecting us. But with the activities that we put in place, we are able to form those strategic alliances with them and issues around women are uh, being addressed. You can see that picture. We have a constitutional review and we, are, we, have, we attended that one and we are asking government to make sure that issues around property and inheritance rights are embedded in our constitution to protect us to be able to access these rights and not be seen as part of property. Um, we mobilize women around the issues of uh, security and uh, land rights and we've created synergy between us and the traditional authority. We are very, um, we are also apart from the religious, from the customary practices, you know, caught up in the web of religion. And so people in a way use religion when it pleases them and when they want to get anything that they want to get, they use the tradition. And so this is conflict between the religion and the custom and we are always caught in, in such a web. We just want to say that when women are given an opportunity to be able to work on their own and identify their own issues, they are confronted. They, 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 they understand the issues that affect them and they are able to take decisions that is always in their own interest. And so we are calling out on, on all our supporters to be able to lace with us, to partner us, so that we'll be able to work effectively, we'll be able to identify our issues within the communities, and in so doing, we will be able to come out of this situation and to be able to reduce intergenerational poverty. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much.